this paper is about making streaming models better by leveraging non-streaming models. So the quick difference here uh, between streaming and non-streaming models is that streaming models have um, only access to limited context when they make a prediction. So they have to output uh, predictions on the go. Whereas for non-streaming models, the whole sequence can be processed um, at once. So here, for example, um, you can see that streaming models can be more suited for production systems. And uh, a lot of production constraints uh, require uh, us to uh, deploy streaming models. Um, but we'll see that we can still leverage the non-streaming models in, a, in an offline way. Um, so let's, let's, let's see how we do this. So the method is the following. It's uh, a semi-supervised method that includes um, using an ensemble of non-streaming teachers. We'll see how we do the ensemble later to label a set of unsupervised audio. So this is a set of unlabeled utterances, usually from, um, from YouTube data. Um, and then once we have those transcribed utterances, then we can train a streaming student model on top of uh, those pseudo labels. Uh, so that's the overall uh, framework. Uh, usually, uh, if you look at here, what we do is that we take uh, utterances from YouTube for our unlabeled sets and randomly segment them between five and uh, 15 seconds. And once we have those uh, segments, then we'll be able to uh, transcribe them using the teachers and then get our uh, pseudo labels uh, so that the stream model can be trained on them. Um, and as we said earlier, uh, the final model the constraint is that the final model has to be streaming to satisfy uh, our deployment constraints. And finally, uh, so how do we do uh, the teacher ensemble here? Um, so it's done, uh, it's a fairly simple way of doing this. We, uh, we take each teacher and ask them to uh, put a prediction for unlabeled utterances. And once all the predictions are made, then we combine them together using uh, rubber. So rubber stands for recognizer output voting error reduction, which uh, basically here means that we use um, the transcripts are iteratively aligned um, and then some kind of majority um, voting function is used to make the best prediction here. So for example, here, instead of having the substitution error here, staples instead of apples um, of uh, the teacher two, then the majority voting uh, because the two other teachers have uh, the correct transcription uh, will output uh, the correct transcription uh, for our ensemble. So this ensemble is supposed to be stronger than any other teacher alone. And so we hope that this ensemble of teachers will be a better teacher than uh, any teacher itself. Meaning that the streaming student model trained on top of those uh, predictions uh, will be better. All right, so in terms of uh, experiments, so we have um, multiple uh, data sets. So for our training data, we use, um, uh, so for our supervised training data, we use what we call confinement, which is basically a set of you know, YouTube utterances um, that is made from user uploaded transcripts. Uh, so we have, you know, that's the number of hours of the sets. So we have, you know, a fairly small amount of uh, hours, especially for Portuguese here. We're going to do the study in both the, the, the three languages, Spanish, French, and Portuguese. But for our enabled set that is segmented uh, from YouTube, we don't really have any constraints here. Uh, so we can scale that potentially, but we, uh, 
we have uh, see uh, here more data than the confining data. Um, so we're going to use that as our unlabeled set. Um, so for our test data, we use um, what we call YouTube long, which is uh, a set of long utterances uh, from um, hand transcribed YouTube videos. Um, and so that's it. So basically, yeah. So once we have our training data, we look at different teacher models and we have uh, three uh, different teacher models. Um, so um, all of them are a conformer. Uh, model so the encoder is a conformer and the decoder is a is a LSTM for the RNNT models here, and we have one CTC model. So the first one is a multi-domain RNNT model, so basically um, train on multi-domain data, so not only YouTube. The second one is a RNNT model, trained only on YouTube data, and the last one is a CTC model trained only on YouTube data. Um, there is, I believe, a description of like the size of the model in the paper. Um, so you can refer to that if you want more detail from the teachers. For the results here, um, we see in the table uh, very clearly, uh, first the performance of the teacher model, and then the performance of a student RNT model trained on top of the predictions of the teacher. So if you take the first row, for example, that's for a Spanish data set, we have the multi-domain RNT teacher that has a WR of 16.4 on uh, YouTube long, which is our test set. And then if you use the predictions of these to transcribe the students, we see uh, a WR of 33 uh, for our students. And that's pretty much what we, the same behavior that we saw in our previous paper for ICASP. Uh, where the gap between uh, the WER of the teacher and, and the WER of the student is pretty wide. What we note here is that the teacher ensemble uh, is always doing better than any of the teacher uh, together here. And, uh, and so it's not only a better teacher, but it's also, um, uh, you know, uh, the predictions also better for the student to learn from. Because when we train a student on top of uh, the teacher ensemble, that's how we get the best uh, results. And we see here something surprising that we'll dive a bit more into details later, is that the CTC teacher, if we just look at one teacher uh, taking um, a loan, seems to be performing best here. And you see that the, this behavior is consistent across different languages here. Um, so yeah, bottom line here, um, the teacher ensemble seems to be a better model than any other teachers, but is also a better teacher in the sense that the student can learn from it better. All right, so improvements over uh, our uh, previous research. Um, so I uh, mentioned briefly our uh, ICAST paper, so you can find it here. Um, the, in this study, uh, one thing you know, uh, that was different was uh, that we were using just one RNT teacher uh, and one RNT streaming students uh, instead of an ensemble there. And, um, and what we see here is that using that ensemble, uh, in a sense, uh, bridges the gap between uh, the performance of the students and the performance of the teacher. So here uh, in this table, you see um, the increase in a WR between the teacher and the students. So what, is, what does this 50% uh, mean? It means that in our original paper uh, for Spanish, the student's WER was 50% higher than the WER of uh, its teacher model. But when we look at this study, when we use an ensemble of teachers, then we see that this gap is closed. And that's for our long from data sets. We see uh, this behavior to be particularly uh, strong for uh, long form data. And we see also in other languages that sometimes the student can outperform the, the teacher models. So the students here are trained, remember, on, uh, you know, on a bigger data sets uh, than the, the teacher models here. 
Um, and one reason for that is that we can scale very easily with the, uh, the label data. So if you look at the results in details here, um, the first row is, I mentioned, you know, like our, uh, you know, sorry, uh, second row is uh, our previous study. And the first row is actually uh, a streaming baseline, just a streaming RNT model trying to confine the data. Uh, so you can, you know, uh, see these baseline as uh, being a streaming RNT model, trained on the exact same data as uh, the teacher models. And you see that these obviously perform worse than the teacher models because this, you know, is streaming, uh, whereas the teachers are non streaming. Um, but you can also see that, you know, our streaming students uh, using this method outperforms uh, the two other baselines. So the first baseline, which is just a student model trying to confine them, and the second baseline, which is using our previous uh, research. All right, so let's talk a little bit about um, CTC and RNT teachers. As I mentioned briefly earlier, uh, the CTC teachers seem to be particularly good for students. And so it's a bit of a paradox because if you look at, for example, uh, this graph, you see that the CTC teacher performs less, has a higher WR than uh, the RNT teacher. So in a sense, it's supposed to be performing worse. But if you look at the student models trained on top of these teachers, you see that uh, RNT2, which is a streaming RNT model trained on top of CTC, uh, is performing a lot better than the RNT model, the same one, same student model, but trained on the predictions of the RNT. So this is a bit counterintuitive because uh, originally we think uh, that a better teacher would lead to a better student, but here it seems to be the opposite. Uh, and particularly if you look at the predictions um, of, um, of the CTC model, you see some weird words that sometimes appear here, like they are made up from uh, word pieces. And uh, because we don't use um, a language model, you see, you know, uh, these word uh, outputs. But the teacher ensemble is able to uh, correct this, basically. Uh, and so we don't really have um, a strong explanation, but more an intuition of why the CTC models are performing um, so well. Um, is that maybe um, the types of errors that the CTC are making, such as these, uh, made up words are very easily corrected by uh, RNT students. Uh, whereas if you take the same RNT model for the teacher and the same RNT model for students, uh, apart from the fact that the teacher is uh, non streaming, then the error that the teacher makes, uh, then the student you know, might not be able to correct them. So because the errors are of different types, uh, we suppose that uh, we can gain uh, some, uh, uh, you know, uh, pretty power there. All right, and uh, finally, on our, the ablation studies that we conducted, uh, we see, um, so we try different teacher ensembles um, using, uh, you know, RNT and CTC as before, but also uh, just only RNT models and only CTC models in the teacher. Um, and also we try to swap the students from a streaming to non-streaming students. So that doesn't you know, um, meet our requirements, uh, you know, but uh, it's so interesting to see that that would give obviously the best uh, WER um, you know, over other streaming models. But what we see here is that at least having one CDC model in the teacher helps the RNT students a lot. I, in fact, the, the RNT uh, teacher ensemble um, performs worse um, than any other ensemble here. Um, so like TLDR, like combining CTC and RNT teachers, that's how we can get uh, the, the best results and, um, and, uh, and the lower WR on uh, student models. And so for future work, we can imagine training um, CTC teacher models, but also with the language model to, uh, to perfect those uh, predictions. 
uh, as well as the scaling the unsupervised test. That's something that we did in the, in the first study, study, but not really in this one, uh, because uh, the unsupervised set can, comes from YouTube, it's very easy to scale, and uh, we showed that um, we can get much lower WR by scaling this set. And uh, finally, we can use uh, you know, uh, more recent research to uh, improve uh, the nature and the quality of our CTCT challenges. Thank you.